Welcome to the latest podcast in the Set to Screen series. The subject today is location. Location, location, location. Can you imagine what a subject that is when you're sitting out to make a sweeping romantic epic that by its very nature must use the landscape, the great outdoors, to amplify and express drama? Because it is an epic, it's a true epic, uh, the, the scale of the locations had to be epic. The location that we needed to shoot this film on, there's in Australia what's called the Near Outback, which is an outback that is close. But there's also a place in the north of Australia, the far away north, which is really the far away of the far away which even today, in a world which increasingly you can just about go anywhere, is truly a frontier. It's truly vast, it's truly inaccessible, and it's truly empty. In the Kimberley, we've found uh, an area that we can get to, uh, the most incredible variation between beautiful billabongs, the Coburn Ranges, salt flats that in a, in a distance of 10 or so kilometres change colour, change uh, the look of them, what you see here. All of those great big epic expanses we've, we've been able to get in this short distance. Well, there was always a concept design that had a mountain that's remarkably like that, uh, a river near the, at the base of the mountain and, and the homestead between the river and the mountain. I came and scouted this around about August 2005 for the first time. I came down the road over there, uh, took some shots at dusk looking back at the mountains, which at the time of taking looked pretty special printed up and uh, taken back to Sydney amongst uh, lots of other photos of the area and Baz hesitated over the photos and then went back to them and then we came back we surveyed and this was uh, where the homestead was going to be. It's actually designated a marsh on the geographic maps of the district and uh, generally you probably wouldn't build a house here but it looks better here and we're not making a documentary, we're sort of making a, a picture that's, you know, in the true Basmark way, it's, it's meant to look good. If the mountain wasn't here, we wouldn't be here. We could be, we could be almost anywhere, but the mountain is, was our guiding element. And when we were making Moulin Rouge, we made the whole world of Moulin Rouge in these sound stages here. We never left them. And I think one of the attractions for me to make this next film was to re-engage in my great romantic love of those sweeping location epics. And the idea of going out onto an exotic faraway location with a 300 plus crew to try and capture an emotional romance was in itself a really exciting prospect. You know, I'm fully aware that there just may not be many movies that ever get to do this kind of shooting again. Um, to be out on location for so long and a movie this big is so hard to pull off. To bring this number of people, this number of vehicles, 55 trucks and all the, the other things that we've got, to bring them this distance is, um, has never been done in Australia before at this level. Somewhere over in the mud flats back there, there's, there's the whole unit circling cattle and doing things like that. We're just a little bit away from them, but uh, hey, we had to build a road to get here this morning. Once we're on the flats here, we're okay, but uh, infrastructure and logistics, that's what it's all about with a movie of this size. It's not always easy, but it's such a blessing to be out here. Um, I, I, I think you capture something out here that you never can recreate 
uh, even with the best visual effects. As an actor, of course, it makes it a lot easier. We come to places like this that at best you get to see from about 40,000 feet in the air, you know, in an aeroplane. It's an honor, really, to be able to do it. And every day, me and my makeup artist, Francesco, we say, thank you, Baz, thank you, Baz. Because without Baz and his crazy vision, I don't think it'd be happening. <laughs>